sitting with Andrew Budd, the Global Chair of MEF. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for inviting me. So the conference is wrapping up. Why don't you give me your broad perspective? What do you think of what you've seen over the last couple of days? To begin with, I've been thrilled by the success and growth of this conference. It's the second time that we've held this, this crossroad conference between MEF North, which is a, a joint activity between MEF in North America, the United States and Canada, and our LATAM chapter. So here in Miami, we've been at a crossroads, and it was kind of a, a new enterprise. This year, the conference is twice the size of last year. Twice as many delegates, twice as many activities, twice as good. And that's, it's, it's, it's thrilling that this idea that has been, uh, that, that we had and we've developed has turned out to work and, and has, it meets such a need in bringing people together. Yeah, it certainly does. And, and so from what you've seen, has it, has it achieved that? Have you, have you watched over the last couple of days this coalescence between North America and Latin America? Oh, people have just been having meetings non-stop from 8 o'clock in the morning until <laughs> 8 o'clock in the morning. Yes, exactly. It's 24 hours a day. Yes, yeah. in a conference it's always kind of, you never know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing if the conference hall is, is, is full or, or empty. Um, if it's full, then why aren't people having meetings? Yeah. It's been kind of half full and it's been a, a changeover in people. And uh, everybody, all the feedback I've had is that, has been that it's been a, a wonderful opportunity for people in Latin America to meet each other, to meet with the carriers, to meet with the brands, and to meet with their, their peers and business partners in North America. And I guess what was the goal to, to bring the best practices of each, each area, so North America and Latin America, and bring them so that they, they share be war stories, best practices, or... Uh. The, the business in this, mobile business in this hemisphere is, is kind of curious because on the one hand, it's joined at the hip. Here in Miami, um, North America and South America um, continually interact. They continually cross over. Uh, yet at the same time, they're very different markets. So it's a learning experience. What can the emerging markets learn from, the, from markets which have already beaten a path? What can American companies who are looking to expand into the exciting markets of Latin America learn and understand? How can, they, how can we learn from each other? How can we partner with each other? And also, how can we understand that those two markets are in many ways going to follow different paths? Absolutely. And I just out of curiosity, how does this compare I mean, from a global perspective? When, when you're, you're, uh, you're uh, participating in certain uh, events like this around the world, um, you know, are there similarities to, to what's going on in North America and Latin America? Certainly, in Latin, the market in Latin America shares many of the characteristics of, uh, frankly, excitement yeah. that we see um, in our chapter in the Middle East, which is based in, in Qatar, sponsored by QTEL, and our chapter out in, in, the, in the APAC countries in, in Singapore. So in the, in the fast growth markets, mm -hmm. there is a real sense of excitement because there is so much opportunity for innovation and growth is, is, a, is a, real and present, a real and present phenomenon. It's the same in Latin America. Yeah. Clearly, North America, North America is a different market. It's also actually at a moment of great excitement because globally, right across the world in MEF, we see that the, our industry, which um, for those of us who've been in mobile for a, a long time, kind of followed a linear development for perhaps 10, 12 years, and over the last yeah, few years yeah. has changed dramatically. It's and kind of, it's gone horizontal. And it's yeah, just, yeah. we are reinventing our industry. Yeah. And that's kind of scary, it's kind of difficult, but it's very exciting because the opportunities for the growth in particularly mobile commerce are immense everywhere. And that's absolutely true of North America. So, uh, I mean, uh, when, you, when you look at this, um, our, um, is there a leading nation or is there a leading continent or is there is North America ahead or is it is it is it something that you see that this is just everybody's growing at the same rate when it comes to uh, an excitement and, and innovation so everybody's doing something different yeah. it's I, I would hesitate to say that uh, to say that there's a leading nation I've just come from a from listening to a, a panel where one of the panelists said that as far as he was concerned the world's leading nation um, was Turkey <laughs> yes. um, uh, clearly, the United States, um, the United States has become the motor for world growth in smartphone applications, yeah, yeah. and is uh, and is driving rapidly ahead in the whole area of NFC rollout. And yet, in Latin America, there is we have tremendous growth. Um, mobile phone usage is ubiquitous, and the path to mobile commerce is clearly travel is clearly moving fast, but in a quite different direction because you have so many unbanked, um, because there are far fewer people with with fixed line broadband connections. Mm -hmm. So the, the, Latin America will be a mobile first market. And again, one of the panelists I heard this afternoon said that smartphones would potentially have a much greater impact on LATAM even than on the United States. So different territories are experimenting with different models. Clearly, mobile remittances, which is another area that we've talked about at this conference, were pioneered in the Philippines and in Africa. Right, right. 
I, but you, you've got to see that that uh, that certainly there's no there's no uh, big screen baggage and and broadband and internet baggage that comes from developing nations that are doing the mobile first uh, going mobile first. D does that give them a, a, a distinct advantage to look around and see like North America, especially the United States, is dominating, but we're recovering from big screens and broadband on the internet, right? We had that middle stage. I, I don't think I don't think it was a disease. No, I, I wouldn't yeah. describe I wouldn't describe forty two inch plasma TVs, but, Blu Ray, and, not at all, and, and, and fast broadband as a, as a, as an illness. But it's a legacy, right? It, it, that's what we're fighting a lot of the times in North America. I, I think that we're moving. There's general acceptance that we're at, a, at an MF CEO summit a couple of years ago, which was attended by the CEOs and, and SVPs of, of major corporations. We had one of the founders of Vodafone stand up and say, in a few years' time, the mobile will not just be a convenient way of accessing online content, it will be the preferred way, your preferred way everywhere. Right. So this is what's sometimes called mobile first. Now, the rate at which we get there will vary, and the context in which we get there will vary. There was a discussion yesterday about managing multiple screens. Clearly, the challenge of mul managing multiple screens is different where in the United States you have uh, multiple screens and successful <laughs> yes. businesses yeah. based upon those multiple screens. You have uh, the cable companies, you have the broadcast companies, you have established advertising funded revenue models. Clearly the development of that industry into a multi-screen model is going to be a bit more complicated than where you're founding things from scratch, maybe in, as you are for example in Africa. So when you, when you look at this, uh, what, what, what was so surprising to you? Was there anything over the last couple of days that, that really jumped out at you and said, you know, that, that's, uh, that's something very significant that we're about to enter? I was struck by the uh, number of times in which the concept of, uh, mo of, of mobile social commerce was discussed. That is the interaction between, that is the use of social networking, com of social environments, social networking as a driver for uh, mobile commerce, mobile commerce. Right. and that, that's interesting because the discovery problem has always been one of the principal issues associated with buying or consuming anything on the mobile. Yeah. You know, you've got a three, four yeah. inch screen, it's kind of tough to, to browse. The concept of browsing on the mobile has never, certainly has never convinced no, me. No, it's never worked. So the, the, in the context of growing mobile com commerce, the, com the question of discovery has been one of the greatest ones. And not perhaps, in retrospect, not very surprisingly, we've discovered that social discovery works really well. The interesting thing was actually how few times Facebook was mentioned. Mm. I'd expected there to, I'd expected to find that that whole discussion orbited around Facebook. In reality, there was a lot of entrepreneurialism in the room. A lot, of, both a lot of people innovating, a lot of people working with innovators, um, who are building specialist mobile, mobile social, uh, mobile social commerce environments, and also find, inventing all sorts of other interesting ways of, of discovery. I was particularly taken by the description of a of a shopping poster where you could you would have a bunch of bananas printed on the printed on a poster you'd go up to it <laughs> snap your camera at it and the bananas would be delivered to your home which is something that's going on in Korea hey, so MEF at a global at a global level what is it that you guys are doing is it industry is it standards development is it is it that uh, reducing the friction between nations what what is it that you guys your mandates so uh, the, the role of any uh, trade association is to add value to its industry um, through acts of coordination, and yeah. that, the way the the, con the results of our coordination can be, in some cases, what we call shaping the industry. That is addressing problems that the industry has that it can't solve by itself, getting them together and resolving them. And again, in Latin America, for example, we developed the Unified Code of Conduct, which solved a colossal problem to do with um, compliance and modes of behaviour within the, the the Brazilian premium rate industry. Right. So we coordinate to shape. We, uh, we coordinate to connect. Um, one must not underestimate that um, this is a global industry based very much upon the interactions between people and those people have to meet. Okay. So one can, one can joke about MEF parties, but they, uh, MEF parties and conferences, but in fact our social events and our networking events um, occupy, uh, uh, fulfill an extremely important role sure. of bringing people together, of introducing business partners who would otherwise maybe have to navigate through acres of corporate bureaucracy. Yeah. We can turn a, we, we can make a meeting happen in minutes that might otherwise take months to, to, to go. So we can coordinate the, the, the physical presence of people. Um, and we, and we, we coordinate to assist the monetization of the industry, partly through, uh, the, uh, through the diffusion of knowledge about business models and more broadly about the diffusion of information about the market. So we've just published our global consumer survey which is probably the most uh, the densest the, the, the most detailed the richest analysis of 
consumer's interaction with mobile content and commerce worldwide that has possibly ever been published. And it's just a goldmine of information for strategic marketeers. And that kind of information has never been brought together. It's original research. It's not, it's not, yeah. it's not secondary sources. Yeah. It's, that sort of information has never been brought together before. So our ultimate our role is to make this industry more successful and grow faster by shaping, connecting, and monetizing. Once our background was mobile content, but now ever more we're working in the area of mobile commerce as well, which, as we've heard time and time and time again here, you asked me earlier what excites me. What excites me is the growth of mobile commerce. I've been in, I've been in this industry for many, many years. We've talked about it. My sense is that over the next two to three years, we're going to see a rapid development in mobile commerce. Um, after having talked about it for 10, it's actually going to happen it's actually quite happen. quickly over the next two or three years, and it's going to happen in, in high-growth markets like Latin America just as much as it's going to happen in the United States. It's just going to happen a bit differently. Well, listen, I, I really appreciate you doing this, Andrew. It's been a very successful uh, event, and I uh, you know, really appreciate the fact that, uh, that you guys are, are doing this and re reducing that friction and increasing the awareness of what's going on in the, in the mobile space. And anything that can uh, help uh, facilitate this on, a, on a, a worldwide basis is something that everybody should be behind, and, and this event is clearly indicative of that with the people that you've, you've brought in. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you. We look forward next year to it being doubling in size again. Nice. Thanks, Andrew.